Welcome back. In the previous video, we revisited some basic concepts of React.js like how JSX gets converted into JavaScript and we also had a look at how components are structured in our application. We also started everything from scratch by deleting everything that was present inside the SRC and we made a simple app.jsx component. So this video will be a good practice for you to remember how did we use to create our React components. So let's get started. Firstly, I am going to make a, a, my app component which will contain the navbar and the landing section. So let me have something like a div with the class name of app and inside that I can have my firstly nav section and then secondly it can have the landing page then it can have the challenge section and finally it would also have the footer component so let's start building this but before that let's style our app.css a little bit just so that we are able to design everything further so for the body i am going to apply some styles which is uh, let's say margin so uh, margin has to be zero and box sizing i'll take it as border box and then font family as we imported in the last section we are going to use pop-ins everywhere in our project apart from the nav bar and some places where we are going to use the other font that we also imported last time and then in the app we are going to apply the style of display flex as always i love flexbox flexbox makes it so easy without any external css library i'm going to use the column uh, direction because we have to place elements and in column wise first will be uh, the nav bar then there will be the landing page then there is going to be the uh, challenge section and then there's going to be the footer and lastly i'm going to put my background color as let's say some dark color probably 26 2a and 2b would be correct uh, for this and finally let's import this app.css in our file for now let's write something like this is the nav bar and yes it did it did it's working perfectly so now let's go on to building our second component which is going to be as you might remember that i structure my components like this one component inside every folder and that folder will contain the jsx component and the style as well with the same name nav.css this is something which i prefer having it's not a hard and fast rule you can go with something completely different and it's up to you so i'll create a function functional component and i'll name it as nav and uh, for now we don't need to pass anything here and i'll just keep a div and let's name it as let's say nav container I hope there shouldn't be any doubt till here because it's more or less completely same and it's just HTML and styling. And then let's do one thing. Uh, let's have let's import our log logo. So as you might remember that in the last video we downloaded the logo.png from the file which I showed you. So yes, it's very simple. Just uh, firstly we have to import that PNG from import let's say logo from dot slash the relative path dot dot slash dot dot slash and the assets and logo dot png as simple as that and then i'm going to put my image with class name as let's say flash logo that sounds very good and this src as logo so here we are going to provide the logo and of course it requires an alt text so it's not mandatory but I'll definitely put it just so that we don't see any warnings and then let's have a P as uh, I'm going to give it a class name so this is an Emmet shortcut so if you are not aware of what Emmet is you can of course check it on Google so it makes our typing speed or the coding speed very very fast by providing us shortcuts like this so I can just type P dot class name and then it will provide a P element to me and then I'll do the 
title as flash type and then let me just quickly import my navigation bar inside my app component nav so as you can see these uh, vs code automatically imported nav from dot slash nav slash nav so this is something super cool about um, vs code but if you, you are not using vs code or if you are not using any plugin which does it for you then you can obviously manually import nav from nav so as you can see it did work but it's not looking good so let's do some styling on our nav.css as well so firstly we had this nav container so of course nav i'm going to use my flex box on nav container as well first thing is display flex as always then i'm going to provide a specific height let's say 72 px should be good and then i'm going to align my items as center because the flex direction is row then align item will be towards height so it would be vertically centered don't worry if you don't understand the flex box as of now i will i will very shortly probably in a couple of months itself release a whole series on flex box which will make you understand flex box very easily so don't worry about it and we are also going to put some some dark background on this and then the margins should be of course zero so you must be wondering why am i doing it as nav left so if we see our final application there is something which is at which is left aligned and something which is right aligned so i am going to name this as left so that i can provide stylings so that it can be left aligned so it's just a name where you can name it whatever you want but i prefer naming it uh, like this so that every name has a proper meaning although i'm not very good at na naming you must have already seen it till now in my previous videos as well i'm not very good at it but yes i try my best so yes again i'm going to align items at center and then very quickly let's provide some stylings to our flash logo as well dot flash logo and of course we need to import these styles as well right import dot slash nav dot css awesome so as you can see the height of the nav bar changed but now we also need to control the height of the logo so of course i'm going to put some left margin as 20 pixels so that it's not completely left aligned and height of 40 pixel so it seems very very awesome so now just one final thing before we are done with this particular logo and all let's provide some stylings to our flash logo text as well so i'm going to give the font family of bangers which we imported last time and then it's cursive font size i think 60 pixels should be an optimal font size for this and letter spacing should be i think one pixel should be fine for the letter spacing margin i think uh, top and bottom zero and 10 pixels sideways should be good enough and color can be some light color because the background is dark so how about e e e or maybe e7 e6 e7 this seems pretty cool to me and as you can see it's working awesome so now just one final thing before we are actually done with this this thing the left thing let's provide some box shadow to our nav container as well so i'm going to quickly provide a box shadow of zero uh, one pixel three pixel and let's say how about the color mm -hmm. uh, let's say let's provide an rgba with alpha value of 0 0 0 and 0 0.12 which would go all the way to 0. Point, let's say 26 or 24 that would be cool enough so these are just random numbers which i'm trying just to see with, whether it looks good or not so yes uh, definitely you can go ahead with something else I will go with 2 or 0 0.26 and you can see it gives a slight slight shadow slight raised effect which makes it look super cool so I think that we are done with the first part now we need to have something like uh, a link to my YouTube series of course and you can link it to your LinkedIn profile or you can link it to your github profile or anything you want but we need to have it here so that it the nav bar actually does not look pretty empty and it also looks good enough so yes let's just like we have nav left let's have a nav right as well so this is again just a name which you can which can be anything so i'll provide my target as 
underscore blank so that it opens it in a new web window and the class name can be as nav aam link so again this is just a name you can provide any name as you want and the href can be http delean programmer.com slash aam you can provide your own link and of course it's going to give them warning so i'll going to i'll create a rel as no referer and then these are some cool html things that i think you should know and i'm going to write this this as aam so as you can see it printed aam here but we need to align it at the right side so let's quickly do that let's go to nav.css and let's very quickly apply the styles to nav right just below the nav left and of course margin right because we need to have some margin from right hand side as well so that it does not look sticky at the right hand corner and let's have height as um maybe uh, maybe uh, we don't need actually height for this one let's uh, do this as this only and to align them from right and left all we need to do is we'll use a flexbox property which i which is called justify content and in in the justify content we can do some property which is called space between so space between will align the child elements the child elements are this and the aam in such a way that they have an equal space in between so now let's see the magic awesome this works this is super cool and yeah so nav right is here all we need to do now is put some stylings to our nav aam ring link so again my class name was wrong here that's why it did not give any margin at the right so that's what i was wondering why does it not give any margin at the right and inside my text i am going to first of all give it um font family of let's say poppins but we don't need to do that because it's already there we already applied that style to the body so let's give it a font size of 32 pixel that should be good enough and a color of uh, the same color would be fine e7 e6 e7 <coughs> and the font weight we need to do it as bold so let's do it at as 800 so this looks super cool now i think that this video is going pretty long so uh, let's end it here and let's style the na landing page in the next video so that it does not become very very big but yes just one last thing before we go just one more property which is our z index so our z index i'm going to provide a high value for z index because i need to be it at the top of every other thing otherwise we won't be able to see the shadow so yes this z index would do it and that's it for this video we were able to finally make the navigation bar from scratch completely by yourself with a little help from me i hope you are proud of yourself and don't forget to share what you are building with your friends and on social media and do let me know how are you liking this video series in the comment sections and don't forget to like this video bye bye see you in the next video